In one of my past videos, I explained how I had used PopOS as a daily driver for around two months with little issue, until in the later part of those two months, my system would refuse to update and eventually started crashing at random intervals. I tried to troubleshoot it, but ended up opting to hop over to Manjaro to replace my PopOS install as my daily driver. So, in the little time I've had Manjaro as a daily driver, how has it been? When it comes to installing Manjaro, you have a couple options for what desktop environments you want to come pre-installed. When looking for the Manjaro ISO on the official website, you have a choice between XFCE, KDE Plasma and GNOME. I'm not going to explain which one of these are, you can check out my video on Linux desktop for a taste of that, but I went with KDE, which is the more beefy and power hungry of the lot. Now, even with the quote, most bloated desktop environment, my final install of Manjaro with programs like GIMP, Shotcut and OBS being installed, only amounted to a package total of 1280, which may sound like a lot to you Arch, Artix and Gen2 users, but my original PopOS install came with nearly 2000 packages out of the box, and on top of that, with PopOS, you don't get a choice for what desktop environment you want out of the box. Of course, you can uninstall the desktop that comes with PopOS, but it's nice to have that choice when choosing which version you can install. I was originally quite careful about which packages to install on Manjaro, as with my PopOS install, every time I installed a package, I was quite concerned about what type of fetch or repository error would come up next. However, no such errors have occurred on my all new Manjaro install. The Pacman slash Pamac package manager is quick, responsive and always has whatever program I am looking for ready to be installed. This is a quick side note, but PopOS doesn't have the out of the box ability to open .desktop programs through the GUI. You have to navigate to the files location inside the terminal and execute the program with the dot slash command. Even though every other distro I've tried, including Manjaro, just lets you run the program through the GUI. I mean there's probably a fix for it, but let's not get sidetracked here. My install of Manjaro came pre-installed with a suite of basic utility apps like MPV, graphics drivers and Timeshift. However, it also included some not so expected packages such as Steam, Qubit Torrent and Emoji Selector. That one's pretty weird, but it's easy enough to uninstall them through the included GUI, man GUI software manager or using the terminal. Come to talk about that, before I installed Manjaro, I had heard that Pacman, the Arch Linux package manager and Pamac Manjaro spin on Pacman can sometimes clash and cause some syncing errors and update failures. However, during my time of using Manjaro, bear in mind it's been around a week, I haven't had any issues so far with updating my system or installing any packages from both the included GUI software manager and straight from the terminal using Pacman. Maybe time will tell, but so far been pretty good. So how is the performance of the OS using programs compared to Windows or PopOS and Mint? To be totally honest, pretty good. I haven't noticed any slowdowns when comparing Manjaro to them, especially when compared to Windows. However, I have also only really been using Shotcut and GIMP on a regular basis, and Firefox, of course. I just haven't needed to install any other programs other than them. Oh, I also downloaded MindTest from the repository just to test it out. It works flawlessly as you'd expect, it's a pretty small program. But after all, these are just the first impressions with Manjaro and how it handles things. But it seems to be handling them pretty well. We can actually just hop into HTOP now and see and see how it is. Uh, Firefox open, I've got a couple tabs in Firefox open, got the terminal open. And we're using 3.29 gigs, which does sound like a lot, but I have about five tabs in Firefox open. And I'm running KDE Plasma, which is the more hungry of the lot. So I don't think it's too bad, and I haven't noticed any slowdown in the system. My system hasn't crashed, other than this one, this one glitch I have with VirtualBox, where I've only I've only ever installed Arch through VirtualBox on this system in particular. But whenever I type in a certain command, like um, clear, just just the clear command, my system will lock up. the The host system, the VirtualBox, it will all lock up, and it will only let me use the mouse cursor. I have no idea why it's doing this, and I've had a look online for solutions and fixes, and I can't find anything. So, if anybody knows what that is, let me know, but I'm at a loss for, for what it is and how to fix it. I've also connected some devices to my system, like my phone, and the operating system automatically detects this and mounts the device. 
with the device unlocked and USB debugging enabled, of course, using USB-C and uh, my Pixel 2 XL, which I think is to be expected from a modern operating system, but, you know, there you go, the more the merrier. Transferring large files took a little while, but worked flawlessly in the end result. I had no issues on mounting either. I've heard from relatives who connected USBs that they've had some issues on mounting, but I've connected both USBs and devices with no issues whatsoever. But if I find the cause of this, I'll be sure to put the solution in the description. When it comes to graphics drivers for specific cards, Manjaro seems to have quite a few at hand. If you have an Nvidia card, like me, you do get the option to install a proprietary or open source driver for it. Obviously, the blob driver is probably going to perform better, or a lot better, than the open source version, depending on how new your card is. But this only really matters if you actually need to use your graphics card to its full potential, like if you need to do some 3D rendering or play some AAA games. I, I haven't played any games on this yet, other than the aforementioned mind test, but... The performance on my graphics card has been fine, I haven't noticed any graphical errors or anything like that. And I do think I'm using the blob driver, but I was using the open source one before I changed it. So it works absolutely fine, there's nothing to worry about there. I'm really quite surprised with how well Manjaro just works with the stuff I need to use it for. Even with all of the complaints I've read about it on the Mongolian basket weaving forums, everyone there seems to dislike Manjaro for some reason for seemingly just appealing to normies and that it uses PAMAC and Pac-Man. But come on, if you're a normie and wanting to opt to Linux, you're not really a full-on NPC normie anymore. Maybe if you use Ubuntu you are, but Ubuntu is a whole different type of normie unto itself. So yeah, all of the hate that gets spewed on Manjaro's direction, I think it's, I think it's quite unfounded, and spewed by people who haven't even tried it, and are probably suicidal LFS users who complain about everything. That's not to say all LFS users are like that, but I'm just saying, the vocal minority are. Come on, Manjaro doesn't deserve the hate. It's a solid operating system, it works for everything that I need it for. Kudos to those LFS users though, they've really got some patience. In conclusion, if you're looking to distro hop to something new, or you have a little Linux experience and want to start daily driving Linux, I would say Manjaro is a pretty good shout. It is Arch based, giving you access to the rolling-ish release that the Arch repository offers, though Manjaro does hold back newly updated packages for a little bit with PAMAC. It also gives you a good amount of programs out of the box, some not so useful, like the aforementioned emoji selector, and is quite efficient with its usage. But if you're totally new to Linux and want a stable daily driver, I would say install Linux Mint. If you're new to Linux and want to quote, learn Linux, install Arch in a VM. I'll make a video about it in the future, but beginners who want to actually learn and digest what they have learnt should install Arch Linux and go from there. It teaches you the basic of Linux commands, problem solving and following documentation. I'll, I'll make a video about it later. But if you're totally new to Linux and you're thinking about using it full time, from moving from like Windows or something like that, I would recommend using Linux Mint because Linux Mint is Debian based, it just works. There's not really that much that can go wrong with Linux Mint. You have a quite a nice selection of desktop environments, so it's not much can really go wrong. So I would recommend Linux Mint if you're brand new to Linux, but if you have a bit of a bit of knowledge about it, you know, if you have had a couple of VMs or you do it for work or something like that, then I think Manjaro is pretty good. Manjaro or Arch. If you're on the same playing field as choosing Manjaro and knowing how to use it, then I think you should probably just use Arch because Arch just gives you that bit more control over the operating system. But, you know, if you just want something to set up quickly and lazily sit back and just use Firefox and OBS like me, then I think Manjaro is a pretty, pretty good choice. Please like and subscribe if you did indeed enjoy this video, and thank you very much for watching. Check out my other stuff that's on the channel. I mainly stick to Linux and tech videos, but I might upload the oddball video here and there, like my previous taking apart a skybox. Interesting stuff. Stay safe everyone, I'll see you in the next video.